Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it might be where you are out there. Welcome back to the live stream. My name is Jeff Fritz. Greetings, my excellent friend. It is so good to see you. Today is March 10th, 2020. We're going to write a little bit of code today. How's it going out there, chat room? My goodness. I've got my brightness turned down a little bit. For some reason, I'm getting a little bit of green screen chroma key hitting here on my... Um, on my screen it looks weird i've been trying to adjust this down trying to clean that up a little bit um i think that's all right i think we're okay there uh how how you doing there chat room give me a second let's turn up the brightness just a smidge there we go now you can see me um gareth hubble is here hello hello let me say good morning dd walsh good morning to you in plague country Yes, play, uh, mm, let's talk about that. I see we've already got a bot here. Well, uh, gosh, that's that's wonderful. We've already blocked and reported. Uh, yeah, blocked and reported. So, um, let's see. Webface, hello, Eternal Dev Coder. Good to see you, Janescu. Good evening, Musical Bookworm is here. Walsh Ronaldo, Frego is here. Good afternoon to you in Sweden. Welcome. Uh, Morzell, earlier than usual, yes, we are on Daylight Savings in the States. Second interview for a remote job. Best of luck to you, Eternal Dev Coder. Hello to Nikita. Welcome. Uh, yeah, Americans, we changed Daylight Savings over the weekend. So, um, and, uh, <laughs> yeah, Americas. Um, how's it going there, Smap? Good to see you. So, um, the, the big news, the big story everybody's talking about, of course, is the coronavirus, right? And, and this is going to be weird to watch this sometime from now and, and how things may or may not have changed. Um, but, uh, yesterday it was reported that a caregiver at a local hospital, local children's hospital, they had it and they interacted with, with a whole bunch of people, including some students some folks that went to my daughter's schools. So the entire school district is closed while they clean the buildings. Nikita, thanks so much for the follow. Appreciate you joining us. 
Um, thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, look forward to seeing you in the chat room. That, not Nikita. Natika. I'm sorry. I pronounced that wrong. I, I misread your name. I, look at that. Copper Beardy. Copper Beardy just resubscribed for 15 months. 15 months. Copper 19 lulls. Copper 19 lulls. Copper 19 lulls. Copper 19 lulls. <laughs> Thank you so much for the uh, for the for the sub there. We'll make another donation to code.org. Oh, there's Natika. All right, very good. So, um, I wanted to spend some time today. We've we've gone through. We've done some some interesting things with our project here, um, working on um, Blazor Web Forms components. We we started working on the commit the command name and the on command features of a button which is something that web forms has but blazer and other frameworks do not have but in order to get our, our buttons to interact properly with all of our other commands we need to be able to pass information about uh, get our buttons to work properly with our other components we need to be able to pass a command into those other components appropriately and that's a feature that was in web forms that we're going to replicate here in Blazor Sharp today. Josh just resubscribed for 13 months. C Sharp Josh, 13 months with us. That's going to keep you in a propeller hat. Thank you so much for joining us. .NET Kyle is here. Hello, .NET Kyle. Good to see you. Good morning. Let me get some music playing here in the background, and then we can talk more about how we're going to pass information around between components here for, um, for our... Uh, uh, blazer components um today let's play let's play yellow there we go this is music to code by by our friend mr carl franklin scientifically designed engineered to get you in the flow to get you in the groove so that whatever task it is you're working on you could focus on and get stuff done check it out at mtcb.pwop.com or you can execute the music command in the chat room get a link Go download, go purchase and download your copy. There's a couple free songs out there you can get as well. I encourage you to check it out. Thank you so much, Carl. We appreciate you letting us listen to your music. There you go. Gareth ran the command right there. And uh, letting us write code better here on the stream. Um, yeah, the hat I'm wearing today, I'm wearing my Captain Marvel hat because we're, we're going to be fighting this. The good fight against uh, the incoming plague. So many people are now working from home. They're they're just getting that understanding of what it's like, the challenges of working remotely. And and to hear people say, gosh, what do I do? The kids are home. What do you think happens during the summer? The summer months when my kids don't have school, right? All, all kinds of remote employees everywhere. When their kids don't have school, you learn to deal with it. So yeah, we've got to handle that. Ancient Coder, good to see you, my friend. Welcome in. Um, and, and th these are challenges that, that you learn to deal with. It takes a couple days to figure out, but you learn to deal with, you have a dedicated workspace. You close the door and this means I'm working. I cannot be disturbed. I'm on a phone call. I'll leave the door open if I can be, if I can talk to you, but I can't play with my kids while I'm at work. And here in this place, I'm at work. It's a, it, interesting concepts. Kaiser Carl. Kaiser Carl 2010 just resubscribed for seven months. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Kaiser Carl. Appreciate that. And we're going to make another donation to code.org. Svava! Oh, yeah. Another 100 bits. And it looks like the hype train is hot. Is on. So... Welcome in, everybody. I appreciate you activating that hype train. All of our cheers, all of our subscriptions, we're donating to code.org. They're helping students learn more about science and technology by providing a curriculum to our schools so that teachers have the, the preparedness, have the training that they need to help help kids learn about technology. Frank! Lucero's just resubscribed for 16 months. Working from home take time to get adjusted. It does. It takes time to get adjusted to it. Thank you so much for the sub, Frank. We're going to make another donation. And that completes level one of the hype train. Oh my goodness. Welcome in. Gareth says, being able to cook your own lunch 
fresh do other chores while you wait on a lot while remote working is wonderful yeah right musical bookworm with the cheer thank you so much um when you are working remotely think about right th chores and things that you would normally have to wait till the weekend wait till the evening right you can do them now dd with a hundred bits thank you so much Oh my, do I, should I put on party mode? Do we need party mode? Not having to spend money while working remote. That's pretty great too. That half hour, 45 minutes, you might have been traveling back and forth from an office. You just saved yourself an hour to an hour and a half of travel. Kaiser Carl, thank you for the cheer. Hey, TBD Gamer is here. Tacos for John Calloway. Look at this. The hype train is hot. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much. We're on level two of the hype train. If we get to level three, I'll turn on party mode here. One downside to telecommuting, fewer donuts. Didi wouldn't know anything about that. Nothing about that. Winter Lore Games. Hello, hello. I don't know. It says hype unicorn is what that emote is, but I don't I don't see it. I don't get it. I don't get it. Um the the home office life is is interesting because I, I'm going to come to some of these other comments, um, right? I I can I can start some laundry in between meetings, and a meeting's typically a half hour hour. That's when laundry's done. You can go pull it out and get that you know set up in between. Do some folding, whatever, and you, you get some of those chores things that would have been done on the weekend done in between things. It's not bad. Start things cooking in the middle of in between meetings and be able to check on the food because you're not that far away because you're just on your laptop at the kitchen table or something it's real easy you get have tremendous flexibility and you can sit in your backyard and, and work when it's nice out very cool stuff uh gareth says can't cope with the office life all the people shouting across the room smacking keyboards oh my gosh yes yeah a lot of noise there. So you see a lot of folks with headsets at, at the all open offices. It, it kind of defeats the purpose of the open office. But it's a thing. Absolutely, everybody needs more donuts. We need a donut delivery service. Does DoorDash do that? Do they deliver uh, donuts? Just get your shopping delivered and have it packed full of... <laughs> well, you, sure, you could do that. Um... Uh, used to use the kit you chose to work with. Don't get handed a cheap, nasty keyboard. Yes. Br bring your own, right? If you want that. Okay, Janescu says, let's start party time now. Oh, no. Where's voice mod? I got to restart voice mod. It's not behaving didn't start properly for a minute. <laughs> That's not right. That's the wrong voice mode. And now everything's screwed up. Oh no. Oh no. What am I gonna do? Things just aren't working quite right. We got about a minute left on the hype train. Not even. Not even. But Janescu wants a little bit of party mode here. Let's see what we can do. Downloadable, Downloadable donuts. donuts. Now, okay, what, what is, is that? How about now? It's party mode now. Hello, hello. Uh, no, don't click that link. How are we doing? 3D printed donuts from mobilize.net. That's the end of the hype train. Oh, yeah. I think I've already got most of the hype train emotes. Thank you so much for participating. Let me turn on the timers here for party mode. 
this. There we go. Five minutes on the clock for party mode. Thank you so much for uh, contributing, and we're gonna we're gonna be making some fine donations to code.org. Uh, so let's talk about let me get my, let me get that virtual machine running today. We'll get back. We'll work on the Chromebook a little bit. Maybe later this week, maybe next week. Let me restart my virtual machine and we will get in and talk about Blazor, talk about components um, and passing data around between our Blazor components. You think I'm on to something? What? 3D printed donuts. Yeah. Didi. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Um, is that is that Fobden Masood says I learned so many technologies, master of nothing. I know I should learn one thing properly, but then I saw something new. I can't control yourself from trying it out, trying something new. You know what? There's something to be said for folks that are a generalist. The folks that are able to do a little bit of everything can help out and have insight across technologies and can make a big difference in organizations where you do have very specialized folks, specialized folks. You have a database person who's an expert with that. You have a web person who's very good at front end technologies. But to be a generalist that can see across all of those things and help pull together new ideas to make integrating better, faster, um, you can succeed with that as well. Gareth asks, am I using Ubuntu in Hyper-V? Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. um, no issue with the Chromebook, just we're going to bounce back and forth to uh, to web forms and being able to pass data easily between there because I'm on the same machine is going to help here. That and the Chromebook takes a little bit longer to compile some of these things. So we want to strike a good balance. All right. I've got a bunch of things inside. There's my Hyper-V machine bunch of things to update go ahead do the update these have been running very quick for me it's funny installing an up installing an update for chrome i don't use chrome on this machine i, I don't use chrome anywhere except for on like chromebook um I, I like firefox so what are my views on Vim versus VS Code at the moment? Asks Gareth. I really like Visual Studio Code. A lot better. Uh, code completion, syntax, highlighting, especially for Razor templates. As I'm working with Blazor, as I'm building features, it's a heck of a lot easier to see those things that are right, that are wrong, instead of fighting with compiler errors. So, um, not bad. Unmute in about a minute. Sorry, Morizel. Come on now, we gotta have a little bit of fun with the voice. Um, so, those are the, di the directions that I lean. Um, Vim is great. You could be very productive typing very quickly, but getting that code confidence early in my development experience um, is extremely valuable, extremely valuable to me. So uh, I, I like that. I like that a lot. Wrong project. Let's go here over to our Blazor Web Forms Components project. Let's dial up the pull, pull requests here. Put on my gunner glasses. There we go. Um, 
I don't think we have any updates here from Isham. And that's the end of our timer. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no further updates here. Let me turn off the, uh, let's turn this on. And we're back. Hey, Kate. That's right. It was party mode. Everybody loves party mode. And we're back. I feel like I need to put another comment with this for Hisham. Um, I don't know how to access the parent object in the base web form component. Um, hmm. How do we... Is there a way in a base web form component to access what the parent object is? Maybe we need to address this a little bit. Um, um, let's open an issue here so that you can access parent components in, from one component to the next. Um, and Gareth has some comments about making test output better behaved. Let's take a look at that one next. Um, uh, components need to be able to access parent components. Um, this will help with uh, creating and maintaining, uh, creating ID, yeah, IDs for components, and um, what else? And passing data between components. All right, let's put a label on this. Um, it's blocking. It is a. It's a bug. It's something that we need to add because it is going to block and prevent some things from happening. Um, so what was the? Uh, I can't go back with. I'm trying to use the back button on my mouse and it's not working. This is 112. So um, added 112. Uh, to help address this issue. Okay. Thanks. Oh, you like that, huh? All right. All right. Um, so the other pull request that's hanging out here is test output improvements. Gareth has some output here. Um, it did a little reading, saw issue 110. Current test output is generated using console write line. This makes for noisy output, slows down .NET watch. Critically, during minimal march, we need to optimize the test to avoid unnecessary standard out writing. Yes. During investigation of this issue, found a few interesting articles on the X unit test and why it was not outputting console write line when doing .NET test on Windows. Um, and Gareth has a couple things for us. Let's take a look at this article. Console write line calls during .NET test are not emitted to the console on Windows. But they were. Hmm. Um, should be using I test output helper, blah, 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 blah. Hmm. Okay, so what did Gareth add here for us? Benjamin Howarth is here. Hello, hello. Good to see you, my friend. Benjamin's been on the show before. Um, so what Gareth has done here is um, should originally be system diagnostics debug write line, however, subject to the VS test issue. So .NET uses default test configuration as dash C debug, or it's explicitly .NET test with the configuration of debug. Yeah. So to use .NET test in release mode, one simply changes configuration to dash C release. There's no need for setting up constants in the project though through a conditional properties group. Okay. Uh, do not have Linux installed. Use an alternative test runner that consumes both debug and console write line statements. If running in debug mode, get this output. In release mode, get this output. Okay. Updated the watch script appropriately. Nice. For an untested Chromebook version where all test consoles were replaced with blah, 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 simply fetch the pull request and run 
Nice. Nice. So 29 files changed, three commits. There's so many files changed because of uh Oh, look at that. You added a watch up at the top. The watch project you added into the project into the solution. All right. In made passed in a configuration release. Nice. Okay. And changed these to test con got rid of that test console it looks like. So this was something we put in to prevent a whole bunch of extra logging during the development process. And my idea was we just introduce a test console that handles and redirects appropriately if you want to do something over there. So here's test console. Yeah, the file was deleted. Don't need it because we're just going to do system diagnostics debug. That looks much better to me. Um, I think we can merge this. Let's squash and merge this. Uh, <laughs> and I think we can get rid of that. Let's do change the improvements here to show. Uh, there we go. Eagle. Uh, no, we have not. Strachu, thank you so much for joining us. There we go. All right, merged and updated there cool um eagle suggests have i tried the new x unit logger no i have not um need to learn a little bit more about that so things move things change and haven't um uses the i logger in c sharp how do we get it How do we get access to that? Sending a link. Okay. So, um, so the next piece that I want to take a look at here, right, is it kind of feeds into this because we want to be able to pass, right, we need to pass from a button, a command that's fired, up to anything that hosts it. Chris Jones! Chris Jones just resubscribed for 18 months. Thank you so much, Chris. I appreciate 18 months. That's going to put you into, I believe, an orange propeller hat. Thank you so much. Appreciate your continued support, and we'll make another donation to code.org. XUnit used to be a full-featured unit testing framework. It still is, Boom Boom. It still is. It's when you have to test outside of just C-sharp classes. You need to add things on and do things a little bit differently. So, yeah, Copper Beardy with a conductor icon. Look at that. Look at that. So, Eagle has a link for us. That's not it. Copy URL. Chattanooga Choo Choo. Beta 6 introducing. So, it was renamed. The Blazor Component Testing Library was renamed to BUnit. Um, <laughs> and scroll down to added support so we want to be able to add that iLogger wait for assertion log statements here we go services add x unit logger um, so that would be in a class for razor and snapshot this is we would add a constructor that does the same thing. Nice. All right. I don't want to make another massive rewrite to introduce this, but going forward, this feels like the right way to go. Um, start using the X unit logger. Um, let's start using the X unit. I think it, right, it's lower X, isn't it? Um, for logging data 
going logging data during unit tests going forward uh, more more information at there and syntax is similar to uh -huh. right yeah there we go and I'm gonna mark this as an enhancement it's not something that we need to do but information so that folks can use that going forward when you run the test the output from the log statements will be in each test output fantastic and Right, we can log appropriately if it's information or debugging. And we'll be able to set that, right? That verbosity is controlled and managed then when we run our .NET watch. So that's great stuff to see. Thank you. Um, so let's, let's go back. Let's talk about this. Take a look at our at our at our button and how we need to pass this command object back and forth to parent components if there is one. So that's something important for us to be able to pass around here. And we've already got a little bit of a concept of a parent component inside of our tree node. So being able to walk that stack is going to be important for us here. Um, so let's do this. Um, well, first off, screen key is not running. Let's get screen key working. Hello? I would like you to be running. Um, is it... Why am I not even paging up and down here? There it goes. Thank you. Um, and we'll start terminal here and we'll take a look. Increase that font size. Right. Um, I'll start up Tmux so that we can have different panes here that we're working on. I feel like I would love it if Tmux would save the version here. Um, Benjamin asks a good question, and it's not wrong. Should we use a service to pass data between different Blazor components? Yes and no. Um, there is a certain amount of application state that we do want to pass and share between components. Yes. However, for components within a hierarchy, for um, the issue that um, Hisham had raised, where he's building the IDs for a component, we do need to be able to walk up that hierarchy and see the, each one of the components. So... There's two different ways to do that. We're going to pass... I think we're going to pass the parent component into the child component so that you can see those. And I think we're also going to have some shared data that we'll pass around as well. And we'll take a look at both of those. But very good question from Benjamin there. And we'll we'll take a look at a little bit of both. A, bit, a little bit like scope, parent, and angular. You got it. You got it. All right, uh, let me see. I'm going to start in my dev branch here, and I, I need to shrink that um, shrink that prompt. I don't need the entire machine name on the prompt. Isn't isn't that just in my um, in my bash RC, right? Um, uh, no, that's not what I wanted. Bash RC, right? Where's the prompt? Isn't there a prompt setting in here? There. Right? If color prompt is yes, Debian... I don't know what these things mean. I want to get rid of the machine name on this. You know? If this is an X term, set the title to use user at host. Yes. Is that this bit right here? The at h slash h. Can I get rid of that? Because I, I don't care about the machine name in here. 
and I see it here also. Let me get rid of the at sign. And do I even need the username? I know who I am. You know? Um, right, if I get rid of all of that. Right? Uh, what is it? Uh, source file? Source file? Is that right? Source or just source? I, I don't know. That's better. I could even get rid of the colon in front of it now. Right? Uh, it was in here somewhere. Right. Right. There. Get rid of that. Because I do care about what folder I'm on, but all that extra stuff is just... It's, it's goo that I don't need. You know? Um, do that one more time. That's better. Make it nice and short, right? So now if I go... All right, let's go work over... No, that folder, right? Now I've got nice and clean, simple. Here's the folder that I'm on and the Git information. I could probably get rid of some of that now that I've got this popping up in Tmux. Um, that's, that's okay. Um, I'm going to run over here my .NET watch um, I could merge in those changes from our friend uh, Gareth um, I don't know yeah let's do that let me git pull uh, git checkout dev right yep one behind And git merge dev. Ugh. Yes, that's fine. Okay. So now I've got those changes in this branch, so I can run watch test over here. Um, right, it's under scripts. Watch test. And it's going to run my tests and sit here compiling and be nice and quiet running just my tests while I actually edit code over there. All right. Um, and we started last time. I had another window over here that I had the samples running in, right? Um, that felt kind of good to have... Uh, no, no. Down here. Right? Right? Um, so let me go dev blazer webform components samples um, you can go away screen keys shoot thank you um, and here I can run .NET watch run and let it just run the and up top we were doing things to edit our samples up here um, mm -hmm. Uh, there, after Blazor server side. Okay. So I'm in the right folder up top. My web server is running down below. Um, and up here, I can go to localhost and I can see it running. Good. All right. I think I'm all set up now. That was kind of a pain in the neck. Right? This is what I want. Okay. My screen keys are quite large. Put them above my head instead. Um, I think we can even we can change the font size. Uh, uh, font size. Make it a little bit smaller. Take down the opacity a little bit. And I do normally have them at the top. Is that better? Well, my code went... I'm cover coding in both places here. So... Um, what was it to the screen... The key to rename... Rename the Tmux window. Um, rename Tmux window. 
right? Uh, oh, rats. Da, 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 da. Re managing windows. Managing split panes. No, no, no. Mm. There it is. Comma. Okay. Fantastic. Alright, go back over here. Um, like that, and samples. I feel like I, I would love to be able to persist this. Right? Um, and this is uh, components. There we go. The opacity helps. Okay. Alright. Um, so we were talking about buttons and we're going to talk about passing state between these. Um... Yeah, shoo, the keys went away. Magic. Um, all right, let me go to here. And let's work on our... Uh, I think we're going to be in here. What? Sure, go ahead. Let's sh what changed? Um, no, I want the old version. Get back into that file. Um, <laughs> all right. So I have these methods, I have these um, the parameters that we're passing into our button so that we can affect this ability to have a command that happens, right? And a command is passes a, a command name and an argument into some sort of a command, on command, event handler that will process and do something with that information. The problem that we have to solve next that feeds into Hisham's issue and that Benjamin is talking about is that command can be listened to by parent components to do things with that. CJ Aliaga. Aliaga just resubscribed for 18 months. 18 Hola, months. San Francisco. Hola, San Francisco. Good to see you. Thank you so much for tuning in. And 18 months of support. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. And that's going to... Uh, we're going to make another donation to code.org. Thank you so much. Blazer Mr. Magoo says, that does adding slash V quiet on the .NET watch command, hide all those orange warnings. No, that's a very good point. I had this discussion yesterday. I had a very long discussion yesterday with our friend Kathleen Dollard from the uh, .NET SDK, the .NET CLI team, that that verbosity does not affect compiler errors or warnings. That's, that's something coming out of MS Build. You can tell MS Build to be quiet about those things. Um, yes, the no warn information. Uh, let me show you. You can put no warn information actually inside of your editor config and it will abide by that. Um, check this out. So I have severity none on these things while we're building with the editor config here. You can put it in CSProj, you can put it other places, but by placing it here, I've turned off these warnings. Um, we can turn them back on, but I'm, I've by putting them in editor config, I've effectively turned them off for everybody. But some of these, we actually should address. We should do something with these. They are a little bit of a problem, so. That's going to be something we're going to want to address. Boom Boom suggests. Let me let me put Boom Boom's question up here. Why not keep the warnings and solve them eventually? You don't like the idea that my project would not build cleanly. Yes. The, yes and no. 
when we're running the .NET watch over here, where I only care about getting these tests reported as successful or unsuccessful, for this type of script here, yes, I I, I want to remove I I want it to be extremely quiet. I don't care about the warnings. Just tell me if the tests ran. When I build the application to deploy to do right and i'm checking and inspecting that everything ran properly yes i completely agree with boom boom show me all the warnings let's solve them eventually the the warnings that i've turned off here are um the obsolete warnings that we're getting because i've marked components as obsolete i've i've purposely built components in Blazor with an obsolete warning built into them. So when you use the components, if you use features that aren't going to be submit, uh, supported, it says obsolete. Um, and the XML documentation warnings, because I'm, I'm trying to get to a minimum viable product here. I don't care about the XML documentation yet. It's something we're going to need to address, but not yet. We can wait on those. So Boom Boom is is spot on here about we do want to see them we do want to see the warnings but for what we're trying to accomplish turn them off let's let's get these things built and we'll come back and fill in some of that stuff later and anybody's welcome to go and and get some of that stuff uh filled in if they'd like you want to spend some time writing some xml documentation we'll put your name up on uh the the crawl at the top of the screen will absolutely uh, thank you and share our appreciation. And you'll learn a couple things. You'll get some contributions um, showing up on your GitHub if you've got some time you want to throw at something like this. So our Blazor Base Web Forms component that you see here, we want to be able to... I don't need to do that. We want to have the ability to pass the parent object around here so that we can... Um, see what the parent is and interact with it. So I don't think I don't think we have, yeah, we don't have a parent object in here. So it'd be nice. Did web forms have a parent object? Parent control? Might have. Um, let's take a quick look. At site is docsmicrosoft.com um, and uh, system web UI control, I think is what we're looking for. Oh, got it right away. Look at that. Uh, properties. Is there a parent in here? Yes, there is. Get a reference to the server controls parent control in the page control hierarchy. There we go. That's definitely something we need to be able to implement so let's take a look at that ug squish red green refactor states that warnings are a problem for your future self yeah you're right um curious drive says i've been watching minimal march from day one it's so awesome to see blazer development on linux even without vs code solid stuff absolutely the, what's what we're trying to show here and where I hope folks start to make the inference here is we're building with Blazor, but we're building a project that makes web forms, ASP.NET web forms, work in Blazor and we're writing it on Linux. Think about this for a second. Now you can take your web forms development. If you can migrate it into Blazor and we have a full set of components, you can now build and work in anything hang on let me say that better in anything right that's important that's something that you can work with you can share other people can contribute to while web forms was um considered to be a a kludgy user interface framework it was extremely productive but if we can get folks using those same concepts in blazor people might see this and go okay i can be extremely productive with very little interaction um
Via Sanctus, I don't think you mean what you think you said. Um, Curious Drive, blah, blah, blah. Eagle Hansen uh, recommends passing around an abstraction. Yes, not a specific component. Completely agreed. Then have whatever parent component that should be passed via cascading value. Yes. Absolutely. Um, uh, J uh, Jocko Mar Marcon says, am I still on the Chromebook? Not today. Just because I need to bounce back and forth here a little bit. Um, we're going to need to run a little bit of web forms for some of what's going on so that I can see what's happening here. Pardon me for a second. Um, okay. Seriously, iPhone, I'd like to be able to just look. Okay, that's fine. Um, I, I get a text message from, from my parents. I want to make sure everything's doing just fine over there. So... Um, Eagle is right. We want to pass around an abstraction. And this, this base class is that abstraction that I think we can pass around a little bit here um, that has some of these features that we're going to want to be able to show and share. So let me add, right? And we saw parent is... That's not how you spell parent. Parent is not in here. So we will pass around a parent object. Pass around a parent object. Easy for me to say. Um, that has the ability to interact here. I'm going to go outside of these obsolete objects. And I'm going to put it below enabled. So it's kind of in the in alphabetical order here. So we're going to add public. Uh, well, this is a base web forms component. Right? Uh, we'll call this parent. Um, uh, get, yeah, get set, right? Um, thank you. Now, it, this is a, it, this is going to be receiving a cascading parameter. Um, and the name, let's call this a uh, parent component. So that we're explicit about here's what the parent of this is. Um, hey. There we go. So that's going to rebuild over here. Um, let's see what we get. Make sure we didn't break anything introducing that. The only thing I could think we might break is the tree node stuff. Stikesoft! Stikesoft raided my stream with 17 viewers. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Welcome in, Raiders. Hello, it's good to see you. Thank you so much. Stoiksoft is a member of the Live Coders team. Just like Copper Beardy, Gareth, and a couple of the other folks that are hanging out there in the chat room. Thank you so much for the raid, my friend. Um, what were you working on over there on your stream? And uh, let's get a shout out for Stoiksoft. Um, let us know. Welcome in, Raiders. My name is Jeff. This is what I call Minimal March. And we're writing we're writing some code uh, for Blazor. That's open source C sharp web development um, using text editors on Linux. And as you can see, I just broke about sixteen of of my tests. Yeah. Uh, Stoicsoft was was using some JavaScript called a client uh, using a client called Alt V, working on a role playing game mode. For Grand Theft Auto 5. Ooh. Okay, that's interesting. Role playing mode in Grand Theft Auto. Oh, I gotta oh check that out. That is very cool. Quam Q says he's a JavaScript ninja. Yeah! Absolutely. Um Paulus, good to see you. Welcome in. Hello, hello. Yes, and horses love JavaScript. That's a thing. So over here, I've got some errors that happened inside. I, I just made a change here to introduce, <clears throat> excuse me, to introduce a parent name here. And I, I broke some of my tests. So um, friends, what I'm going to do here is um, I'm going to scroll back and see if we can figure out, well, where did I break things? Because um, damn, I broke a lot. Um, the type tree node declares more than one parameter named parent hmm. okay 
So we have another component in this collection that we've been building that generates our uh, a tree view, right? It's a typical tree that you might see inside of a, a graphical user interface where you've got parents and child and you can expand and collapse. So we have a tree component there and I've got, I've already got something there called parent. Um, all right, uh, we're gonna need to address that because I'd really like this to be the parent. Maybe tree node overrides this and makes it a little bit more explicit as to what the parent is. And it's a different cascading parameter. Hey, Stelzy, good to see you. Uh, neutral dread. Um, this is this isn't in the Ubuntu subsystem. I'm in a virtual machine. You can see up top here. I'm on a virtual machine, and I'm inside of. Um, we'll use Windows subsystem for Linux. I'm thinking about doing Windows subsystem um, next week for a little bit. And times for the stream next week are going to be a little bit different because next week is MVP Summit, and MVP Summit for folks who are MVPs. Um, you know it's going virtual. It's all online. It's video broadcast. It's a private video broadcast. So I'm going to try and get my stream in before the broadcast starts because I'm, I'm going to be moderating the uh, MVP Summit. So, um, Blended Software is here as well. They're a member of the Live Coders team now. The latest member. Good to see you. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for joining us. Um, Uggsquish. Um, says, where'd it go? It just scrolled off my screen here. You have this stream and Kyle open every morning. Nice. That is very cool. Thank you so much. Why is it private? Ask Curious Drive. Um, the MVP Summit shares NDA things with the MVPs so that we can um, get their feedback and Microsoft folks can get their feedback, discuss things that are going to be coming out. Um, and have a, have a real conversation about products before the next big event and get some things happening. .NET Dev has the same Gunner glasses. I, I like my Gunner glasses. Gunner supports the stream here. If you check just below the Twitch video here, there's a link for Gunner. Use the code. I believe the code is C Sharp. You'll see the details just below. And you can get, I think it's 10%, 20% off your order at the Gunner website. Um, it, it is, it is a commercially sensitive event. Thank you, Benjamin. So should each component set itself as the parent for child components? Yes. In that case, you have each component wrap, whatever it renders inside a new cascading. Exactly. Which is going to make this a little bit tricky, but we'll figure this out. Let's, let's get to this. Um, so this is going is misbehaving we need to go over to our uh oh no i've gone too far uh i need to close that i've got no what have i done uh i've done too many things there we go now i'm over here Whew. all right uh tree node is where i want to go there it is so the tree node has a parent object in here. Da, 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 da. Where is it? Where is it? There it is, parent tree node. Hmm. And I can't do a rename on this like I might do in Visual Studio Code or Visual Studio. That'll go find all references and renode it. Yes, .NET Dev, this is Hyper-V. You are correct. Um, gosh, this is going to be messy to clean up, isn't it? Because what I would, because what I would really like is to rename this to parent, parent node. What does the tree node object, right? Um, site docs, Microsoft.com. Um, System web UI tree node. Boom. The search inside of here isn't as accurate as using a search engine. So I use the search engine as a preference here. So let me take a look at properties here. No, it's parent and 
the parent here is overriding and returning a tree node. Hmm. 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 Can we take the tree node here? Can we make this a new on this without breaking things? Can we do that? Let's see. I. Right? We're not overriding. Walk. No, no, walk. Um, OmniSharp is installed. That's how I'm getting the syntax highlighting here. And I could control O, control X. There we go. So, ooh, nope, that didn't work. Maybe I, if I make this, if I can't make this an override because it returns a different type. Right? Uh, right? No, it should be over here. Right? That's not necessarily going to work here. Eh. Nope. Nope. Cannot override an inherited member because it is not marked virtual abstract. All right, well, heck, let's go over there and mark it virtual. Um, this one. Where to go? There. So go back and make this virtual. So over here, restarting. Let's see what we get. The Chromebook isn't retired. Um, just run a little bit faster over here. The first instance would be virtual, so the I child pointing to V child. Uh, oh my goodness. Uh, Tessel. That's confusing. It, I do want it to just refer to the first in line. Um, must be a base web forms component to match the overridden member. And it's receiving a different cascading value as well. Hmm. <laughs> um this is this is we're 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 in object oriented programming uh hell is where it feels like we are. Uh this one. Okay. Uh, hmm. Not the image. Where am I? Yeah. So. Um. Okay. If I make this a, if I make this a base web forms component, does does that negatively affect me? Well, let's see what happens. Base web forms component. Right? Um, so let's say as a tree node, otherwise value. Right? That should work. Paul oh. can it just resubscribe for 15 months. Thank you so much. Appreciate those 15 months of support. Very cool. Thank you very, very much. Um, and we'll make another donation to code.org. All right. Um, so now can I implicitly convert base web forms components to tree node? Uh I know. Um, I need to be over here. So it doesn't like that as. I would have to wrap it with a try in order to get that. All right. Um, right, I could do it, yeah. Equals uh, tree node value, right? Uh, catch, uh, oops, um, parent equals value, get rid of this line, um, 
why should it be converted to a tree node? Because we need to go through and we need to navigate the depth. I want to have a reference to it if it is a tree node. Because we're receiving parent tree node here. I wish I could just move this up. What is it to cut, to cut and paste? Right? It's... Right, that was... I did a double Y to yank. Fixter Jake! Fixter Jake 14 just resubscribed for eight months. Good morning. Good morning to you. And uh, thank you so much for, uh, for that eight months subscribing. And uh, we'll make another donation to code.org. It is a base web forms component. Yes. You see Linux, you like it. Oh, I'm glad you enjoy. Um, but this is receiving a different component going down the stack. Let's see if we can rewrite and get that working. But a tree node has depth, yes. Cannot implicitly convert, you stink. Blazor Web Forms component does not contain the definition for underscore child nodes. That is in Razor CS line 106. Do, 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 do. Here. Um, that should help with that. Can't you have both? Tree node parent is very specific to this implementation. Yes, it is. Mm. Blazor Web Forms component does not contain a definition for add child node on line 185. Where are we here? Um... <laughs> okay, Let's see if we can get that to resolve. Have tree node passed depth down to its children? It doesn't know its children's depth. Right? We're walking up to calculate the depth. All right, so here we are at just that conversion issue. Um, <laughs> um, no, uh, I want the next one. No, 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 no. So, all right, what if we rename this then to parent tree node, but we still have that parent object that returns a base web forms component. You think they should it not be the same, but they are the same in the case that it is a tree node that is the parent. Right, and this does inherit from a base web forms component, right? It's a it's a more more specific web forms component. So, in which case, I oh boy. So we have a parent and a tree node parent. One is more, right? One is the more specific version of the other. And it's not letting me do a conversion between them. Uh, parent, let me get back to the parent. I need to convert between them. 
I don't care about the depth yet. Well, I don't care about this yet. I need to get this resolved. Right, I need to be able to have, you would need to cast the parent to a tree node to use the add tree node method, yes. No, this, um, oh, that is, is um, right. You're right. Um, it, it's this bit here. Okay. So let's rename this. To tree node parent. No, wait a sec, wait a sec, wait a sec. Oh man, I'm getting wrapped up. Um, I need to receive... Let's do this. Um, tree node. Tree node parent. John Calloway, take care. Enjoy your tacos. Um, right, looking at the code here, the, the parent is returning a tree node. Oh, this is not a web form component, a web control. This is just an object that is not a control. Uh, ha! So what am I taking from the base? Stop editing that. Right, git checkout, tree node. So that build's gonna fail over here. Right, do I need this to inherit from base web forms component? See what happens. If I don't need it, then don't do it. Problem solved. Do, do, do. Maybe it builds, it fails. Um, why, what do we got over here? Kasukin with the raid. Oh my god, welcome in, my friend. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for the raid. 
How's it going? Glenn? Who's Glenn? Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, you can defend if you'd like. Um, welcome in, Raiders. My name is Jeff Fritz. We're writing a little C-sharp, a little blazer code in Linux today. Um, and we're working through a little object-oriented issue right now. We've created a property in a base class. And we've got a collision in a child class we're trying to resolve. Kasukin with the resub! Kazukin just resubscribed for 19 months. Gee. Close. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. 19 months of support. Really appreciate that. And we'll make another donation to code.org. Um, Veilcas85. Hello. Good to see you. Thanks for tuning in. Um, Kasukin, how you how how are you doing? I know it's it's been a um uh, in, in your part of the world, things are a little bit crazy here with the with the virus. I hope you and yours are all doing okay. Um, best of luck to you there. Um, uh, what happened over here? New keyword is not cutting it. No, 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 no. It's not. We're going to need to figure that out. Uh, let's see. Crazy situation, I'm sure. My goodness. Um. In Switzerland is only better than Italy for right now. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, I hope that works out for you. Um, so, the type Blazor Web Form Components Tree Node declares more than one parameter matching the name parent. I thought we just deleted that. It's a question of time, says Kasukin. Uh, my goodness. I do not envy you, my friend. Um, so Trino declares more than one with parent. Uh, I don't... I didn't think so. Let's keep scrolling up, see what else we see here. Because it's in the test that it's blowing up. Yeah, Trino declares more than one parameter matching the name parent. Invoke fixture. But I'm not inheriting from base web forms component. Oh, wait a sec. Hmm. Hmm. Oh no, what happened? Now I've got this weird... Why do I have two nerd trees? Now... What was that? Oh, I see how this works. I see how this works. Thank you so much. We're gonna go to hamster mode, huh? Is that, is that what we really want to do? Um... All right, fine. We'll do that. So here's my tree node. It doesn't implement anything. Hmm. But uh, I think we can keep the groovy music playing. And oh, you you need to go make a coffee. But this is for everybody else. Sending us into hamster mode. I I see I see what we're trying to do here. All right, fine. We'll put that up. And uh, I need to make this one button. I really do. Five minutes on the clock. There we go. Hamster mode. Oh yes. Yeah. In Italy, the apocalypse is happening. 133 deaths in one day. That is terrible. Oh my goodness. Uh, all the best to our friends in Italy. My goodness. I'm not sure why we're getting these errors over here. What's crazy, Webface? Let me know. Open up some uh, ladrinas here. Hello. 
And hmm, why are we getting? Why is it saying that we have these errors? Um, declares more than one parameter matching the name parent. Hmm. Hmm. Five minutes where Frank won't be productive. What you think this is all just fun and games? <laughs> yes, yes it is. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna go back and not being silly. Uh, this. What do you think? No. No, 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 yes. Um, I think it's fine. Rerun that. Hmm. Let's see. Come on. Let's go. I want to see it. No. Lots of failures. Crumbs. Um, you're gonna learn some machine learning, Jessica? Cool. Um, Trino declares more than one parameter matching the name parent. Hmm. But that's not a thing. We just saw over here. Okay, but it's a lowercase parent. See that right here? It's not there. So where is it? Where is it getting that from? Uh, I'm not sure. Does that build and run properly? Just removing them? RJ Dudley! It's meeting time? Aww. Oh, thanks so much for joining us. Good to see you, my friend. Mm -hmm. It built. It ran properly. Hmm. But this component doesn't inherit from this. Right? Right? So it builds properly. There it goes. All right. It's when it runs the test that it fails. Uh... Oh, that's the end of hamster mode. You were not expecting the voice. No, no, no. How dare you? Nobody expects the hamster voice. <laughs> Yes, oh yes, it's just that much fun. <laughs> All right, um, that's weird. Why am I getting 
Fall in. Hamster voice must be used in serious meetings. Um, is is? Nope. They finished their their morning meeting. I can jump in there with my colleagues later, and turn on hamster mode. Let's see how that goes. Thank you, Blazer, Mr. Magoo, for the redemption. That was a lot of fun as always. When we turn on some of those other voices that we have here. Um. So let me see. Why? Hmm. Why am I getting this when I turn on parent? I'm not passing anything named parent. Right? Uh, put me into... No, over here. Where'd it go? There. Um, right, it's called parent component, not parent. Inga! Hey! We're, um, we're having, we're, we're running into a inheritance issue here, trying to add a parent, parent component feature into our, um, into our components. It's failing the tree node compile over here. Tree node tests. Um, is it... In here. Mm -hmm. Parent tree node is the name of the cascading value that's passing. That's when it actually executes. And it's passing this. It's passing, here's the current thing. Liam Moat. Thank you for the follow. Appreciate you joining us. Look forward to seeing you in the chat room, Liam. And, um... Is, is, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Welcome in. Thank you so much for the follow. As I drink from my see-through Madrinas can. Um... This is confusing because this component no this component now doesn't inherit from Blazor Webform's component. They're closing schools in Romania. All the infections can be traced to Italy. People are feeling anxious. Yeah. Stay inside, isolate yourself, do a little self-quarantine. Best of luck to, to our folks there in Europe, especially in Italy, our friends. We're, we're thinking about you. I hope you, hope you do well through this. Um, so why am I not getting... Why am I getting it not picking these up properly? All infections in Austria are traced back to Italy as well. Oh, wow. I don't need this to do statement. That's... Um... Crap. Why am I getting... Matching the name parent, and it's all lowercase parent. Which doesn't exist. Right, there's this element, but it's it's not overriding or referencing anything. <sighs> so how is it colliding? Hmm. Is it coming out of um, the tree view? Why did it do that? Why did it split? And it's, right, it's not passing parent. It's passing parent tree view here. Go away. 
Yeah, in Italy, only all people, almost 60 million people, are only allowed to go outside for certain purposes. Yeah, they've really got the country locked down. It is, it, it, it is not a friendly scenario right now in Italy. Um, I'm really confused where it's getting this from. we do this does that do anything for us it is colliding yeah tree node on initialized async no suitable method to override the plot thickens <clears throat> These do both override component base, inheriting directly from component base. It's getting a little confused here, it feels like. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I get it, I get it. Um, so if I go back to this one, inherits component base does that get me on the right track here maybe okay we're, we're into the tests hey now we're talking all right all right um So if I go back to the base component, there, now it works. Okay, all right, all right. <clears throat> I think we're in a better, much better place. Um, okay, I'm feeling it. So, now I need something to turn that and pass it down into the other um, into the other components that inherit from this. Um, do we have child components implemented here? No. We're going to need to implement child components. And that's going to collide with a bunch of things. Before I get to that, let me go over here to the chat room. Nothing Else Matters has a question. Nothing Else Matters asks, Is there a good video or place to look to move your project to DevOps for building and deploying? You've been trying Microsoft Documents, just not helpful for you. You learned some, but I'd like to see if you can find a good resource. What's what's the problem with the Microsoft documents? You're looking for a video on how to do this. Um, you're moving from what to Azure DevOps. Um, there should be some great videos and documentation over there on it. Um, take a look at learn.microsoft.com. There should be some stuff over there to help you out with that. Um, and get you pointed in the right direction. Um, I'm curious what problems you're having. What... Uh, I know I'm I know Plural Sight has some courses on it. Um, and there's definitely folks talking about it on YouTube, but I I don't know of a specific really good one to go find. Um, I'm I'm sure my friends um, Donovan Brown and Abel Wang have some great videos out there. Jessica Dean, some of the other folks on their team as well. If I implement child components here. Frank did some as well. There you go. If I implement child components here, it, this is going to break a bunch of different things. Um, 
let's uh, let's implement it, figure out where it breaks, and handle it appropriately. I'm actually going to put it in here. Um, yeah. Um, this is a public render fragment. Child components is a feature inside of Blazor that refers to any component, any markup that exists between my begin tag and end tag. And I think actually this needs to be marked as a parameter as well. And this should run into an issue because folks have got things already referencing. I've already got components that reference and have this feature for child components. Um, Boom Boom has a pre-built pipeline in Azure DevOps they started with, and it was pretty straightforward. It goes with Git repositories in Azure DevOps. It's just plain old Git. Yep, nothing new. Should work. Maybe I'm not going to run into an issue here. Look at this. The, uh, all right, let's see if it builds properly. Run It built, and the tests work. Okay. So maybe I am okay. You did not start in the Microsoft style. That's okay. It should, it should be easy to pick that up. Uh -huh. You're having a hard time linking repositories properly. Um, we've done, we've shown a couple times here how to set up Azure DevOps with GitHub here. If you're trying to link to somewhere else, somewhere in a private repository that's not exposed to the public net, there are other ways to link that up that you can make that happen. Blazer Mr. Magoo says, hope you enjoyed hamster voice. Next time you need a coffee, we're going to make it party time. Oh, no. Oh, no. Let's do this. Let's take this next step here. I'm going to move that base web forms component to base web forms component dot razor. Uh, base web forms component dot cs uh, dot razor. CS. Thank you. And um, we're going to make a base web forms component dot razor. Now let's go do that one. Uh, okay. So uh, we have a no, 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 no. Uh, cascading value. Uh, name equals, I forget the name of it. Uh, is it parent component? Something like that. Um, value equals this. I think that's how you do this, isn't it? And uh, child contents. Is anyone a Fritz Bits millionaire yet? Asks Blazer Mr. Magoo. How many hours of streaming would that take? Lots. Don't know much about how to integrate unit testing in .NET projects. What's the best place to get started with it? Best place to get started with unit testing. Curious Drive is asking about best place to get started with it. Um, are there... So... Don't go to Microsoft Learn if you want to learn about .NET. It's they, not currently integrated. Microsoft.Learn is focused on Azure training. Um, if you want to learn about .NET, you got to head to dot, .NET and click Learn over here. Um, and this is one of those places where you're kind of seeing the seams between Microsoft divisions. Um, and they've each got different goals. Um, so if you want to learn about testing, if I go into C sharp here, is there a testing material materials in here? Unit testing. No. Hmm. Interesting. And they don't have a search in here as well. That's interesting too. Um, is there any testing under web? Nope. Okay. So there's a gap that we don't have in this documentation. Um, I would head over to Pluralsight and I would take a look at some folks like, um, I believe Steve Smith has a, uh, he has a bunch of good, good videos there over 
building maintainable C Sharp projects, take a look over there. Our friends at Wintelect Now have some good testing courses as well. But I would take a look at, at Pluralsight if you're looking for a video. I wonder if testing's not there because it's mostly third-party frameworks. No, Blazor, Mr. Magoo, I'll tell you that it's not there because it's um, it was overlooked by the team. Um, oh, there we go. Okay, there is a unit testing .NET Core 101 project. Thank you. There you go. So, right, there's some feedback I'm going to take to the team as well. Um, uh, can't search for content on uh the dot net learn pages okay nice thank you gareth i appreciate you digging that up so um all right heading back over to the project that should that should work right let's see if it compiles over here while it's doing that uh -huh this public abstract class that's probably not going to compile properly oh it didn't even compile look at this hmm hmm um it's not abstract anymore now it's virtual and it's a partial class too There we go. Now we got it recompiling. I, I'm expecting to see this crater out with an error like that. Uh, modifier merge virtual must precede the member type and name. Uh, okay. Um, hey, Coding with Jerry is here. Thanks for tuning in. Um, Jeremy Knight asks that... Here's a real question. MS test or X unit? X unit is in the .NET Foundation. Um, was the test framework that the .NET Core developers, ASP.NET Core developers were using from the get-go to test and build and work with uh, their projects. I prefer X unit because it is so ingrained in what the engineering team uses. MS test is nice. It integrates nicely with a bunch of different tools. XUnit does as well and um, has been tuned for a bit of performance as well. So I prefer XUnit. Thank you for the question, Jeremy. Um, Stelzy says, when Jeff speaks of the rift between Azure and other divisions in Microsoft, you get reminded of the gun org chart. Yes. Yep. That absolutely is. It, it is. It hits too close to home. It is so true. Um, there are... There are folks in divisions that are hostile towards other divisions. They've got their goals. They've got their business goals. And they don't care if you've got something that plays well with theirs and would make a nice customer story. Those folks don't want to collaborate. That's their choice. Um, and it happens. And it's not just a Microsoft thing. That happens at many, many enterprises, corporations. So we've got this is not building and, and running properly. Base validator type on initialized, no suitable method to override. Um, now we're getting into some of the other components are not working properly. List view, list view item on initialized, no suitable method found to override. Uh -oh. Look at these, right? So this is failing building the components. Partial declarations of base web form components must not specify different base classes. Really? Um, <laughs> interesting. Um, all right, so let me go over here. Is that telling me that this one, yeah. Uh, at inherits uh, base at uh, no component base. See that rebuild over here. See how we do. If that helps. Um, 
It'd be nice if it told me the number of errors here, but it just kind of craters again. So a bunch of warnings and one error. Uh, the name child contents does not exist in the current context. Huh? Hmm. A lot more examples on the web for X unit. Yeah. What do you mean not there? Uh, child components. Oh, rats. Rats, rats, rats. Uh, there we go. Save that so we can get it to reload properly. Um, here we go. And there's a, there's... Ah, now we're getting into the test. Alright, so it built properly. Now let's see if the test worked. The test worked! Fantastic. So we just made a, a significant architecture change to the application. And because we have our unit tests here, we know it works. In fact, if I head over here, let me force... Yeah, this this didn't work too well. Let me see if we can get the page to... The samples to restart now properly. Sometimes when those child components change, it doesn't restart the web server properly here. Let's see. There we go. All right. And if we go back to this, retry. Yep, reload. And if I go to my... Well, this is a tree view, and it's sure working properly. So we just made those changes and introduced a parent element, and it works, right? So we're, we're actually in a pretty cool place now to start passing now, right? We now can go from our one component to the parent component, and we should be able to reference it. But we should test that. We should add that as a feature to our unit tests so we can be sure that it's working properly. So um, let me head over here, and let's go up to our unit tests, and let's make sure that our... Excuse me. That our components receive the parent component properly um will be a good one to test this in that has a child component to it um <laughs> um let's think 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 right we need to make sure that this actually works properly Something that has... Oh, well, we could put a button in a list view. And make sure that it has a parent. Let's do that. Yeah, that should work. Should work. Let's see here. Um, I feel like I should create another folder here. Got a jet. Have a good one, Webface. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, let me go over here. Let me go into the uh, test project. I'm going to make a folder for uh, base web forms component. Um, let's go into there. Um, and uh, let's call this uh, parent.razor. And we'll load that up with features to test that it does properly receive the parent object. Yeah, 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 yeah. We can do this. We can do this. Is it? Did it reload it? Nope. Nope. If I jump down into it, nope, didn't reload it. Rats. I 
it's not really where I wanted to be, but it'll work. Um, do, 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 do. Go up a folder into test. Uh, huh, huh, huh. There it is. So here's where we're going to start working. Now we need to implement, we need to handle, we need to behave like the other tests. Um, let me grab one of the list views. Here, I'll grab this one with layout. Um, I'm gonna grab uh, the first 20 lines. Come over here. There we go. There we go, look at that. Copied and pasted, Lily Hazel is here. Welcome in, Lily, so good to see you. Um, Greetings, my excellent friend. She is, Lily Hazel's in the chat. Um, so let me see. I'm not gonna, I don't have, yeah, okay. So um, in my layout here, I have a header, my item placeholder. I'm, I'm not concerned so much about those or the items outputting, just lurking, that's okay. Not a problem. I don't even care about the item placeholder so much. What I'd like to do is put a button in here and make sure that the button has a parent, right? So let's do this. Let's wander over here. Let's put a button and I'm going to call this um, my button, right? Uh, and put some text with it. I think I need an at sign in front of this, right? Um, let me go to the end. Uh, there we go. So let's start writing the test that goes with this. Thank you. Um, right, so it's called first test, right? All right. Uh, oh, I'm already in first test. Right? Do I have that right? That should build and it should come back and say run the test. Interesting. It didn't run the test. Because hmm. watch test says to watch dot razor files as well. Hmm. Boom! The name my button does not exist. At oh, duh. Right. Thank you. Um, so I need to have a button um, called my button so that it can properly reference that. Right? That should work. Should build properly. Come on. Build, build, build. All right, so built. There we go, 144 tests. We're not actually doing anything yet, but we've got the tests. Okay. I don't even need the component under test. I just want to inspect my button. That didn't sound right. Um, so let's say my button dot parent dot should not be null. That should build properly and come back. There we go, running the tests. Bang, look at that. Object reference not set to an instance of an object. Hmm. Hmm. The plot thickens. All right, all right. Invoke fixture action. Okay, so we've got a couple different things going on here. Hmm. Okay, let's, um, all right, so first things first, let's put a little bit of uh, protection on this and say my button should not be no. And we should see this load up and finish. 
right? It should come up and say, <clears throat> and there's our error. Should not be null, but was. Yeah. Hmm. So we didn't get, even though we have the at ref here, it's not passing that back because it's a child inside of. That's interesting, isn't it? Right? Because when, when this isn't here, there, I'm modifying razor files and it's restarting. There we go. Right? It errors out and says, oh, you're at refing something that doesn't exist. That's got to have to do with how we built the component. Well, if I do a component and find the button, Gareth, we're not... That's interesting. Your message there didn't show up in featured chat. Um, it, sure, the button should exist. We should be able to verify that it exists. Um, right? Uh, what is it? Uh, var cut equals get component under test uh, cut dot uh, find all uh, should not be no now uh, find all is going to be a collection um, should not equal That should be a thing. No. Well, all right. The at ref is is erroring out here, so we've got that to fix first. No, I didn't want to write one. Crumbs. Um. Where did it write one to? There it is. Thank you. All right. Let's see what we got over here. Still an error. What did it error on over here? Int does not contain the definition for not not equal. Oh. Over here. Oops. Write that out. Here we go. It should not. Is that what it should be? Oh, thank you. Get that building. Come on. Should not equal accepting a first argument of type int could not be found. Yeah. Go! Why am I not getting... Right, that's an int. Should not equal. Um, <laughs> uh, right, where are... Hmm, where'd the wiki go that was up here? Um, how do I get to the docs now? It's not in wiki. Okay, it's over here. All right. Um... Should have count. Now that there was a shortcut for these.
Should contain, should contain, should all be, should have single change, should be addition. I had a count should should equal should be is it should not be Should not be. Didn't work. Shouldly uses your source code to generate its great error messages, but your test project with full debug information to get uh, private should not be null, but was. Okay. So that's telling me these refs are where it's erroring out. but it did find the button in the air in the output okay but I want to inspect that object that component and I can't get a reference to it hmm How do I get a reference to it? Just double check my schedule here. Okay. I have a little bit of time, but I do want to wrap up. Um, so I can't get a, I can't get a hook on that button to be able to inspect it. Hmm. <laughs> Am I finding the button on the should not be? It, it that's a that's a good question, Jeremy Knights. Am I Jeremy Knight S. Am I finding am I getting the button there? Um let's comment these tests out just to make sure that we are appropriately getting the button when when we tell it to find all on that and i think we are i think but let's confirm and then we can do some more tests so there we go we are finding it here on line 29 so the next question is how do we get that as a component i'm not actually initializing the button what do you mean i'm not initializing it let's let's talk this through um button my button no i'm 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 not because i have it referenced here <coughs> that should be created and drop it into that object at the point that this executes that should be populated up here and and we know this is an issue First render has happened because we got the button here, right? If if this is commented out, it doesn't compile. It doesn't, right? It errors out and says, oh, I can't find what you're referencing here on line 13. See? <clears throat> My button does not exist in the current context. So this is trying to become that. Can I reference it from the find all? That is giving me markup at that point. It's not giving me the blazer component object. I don't think I can walk back like that. Um, this is that, but it's null. Exactly. Right? When I include that, should not be null. It is null. It didn't set anything to it which tells me 
somehow it, it right it's not it's not rendered appropriately somewhere um Right, where I want to be able to reach in to that button and say, do you have a parent? I can't get there. 100% sentiment. Look at that over there. That's pretty cool to see. Um, so we aren't initializing it, but we are trying to inspect it and get that back. But I don't have a way to reference it. Hmm. That could be an issue. Um, hmm, 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 hmm. hmm. What if What if for the purpose of testing this? Hmm. I could set up a could set up a, a static reference just to see if it gets initialized. Static property. Coding stocks. Why are we trying to get a reference to the button? So this button is a child component inside of a list view. We're trying to make sure that it's being properly created and that it has a parent object passed into it appropriately so that we can build and have that hierarchy available and managed for us. And it's not clear. Wanadza, hello. Welcome in. Um, it's not clear that it's being built for us properly. Hmm. <laughs> this is interesting. Because um, we're, right, we're trying to walk up and down the hierarchy of Blazor components. And it's, it, it is and it isn't here rendering appropriately so let's think about this um, hmm. can I just write something in the set function sure right we could just right if we um have a private uh, I don't even need that do I um, um, right I, I, I don't really care what that does Uh, console right line foo, right? When this runs, yeah, it should, we should see console right line foo happen in the test. And it doesn't. Oh, wait, there it is. It tried to set it. Look, 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 look. Wait a sec. Ooh, we might be onto something here. Uh, value get type. So maybe it sets it back. Well, if it sets it back to null, we would see. Let's see what's in there. Let's see what happens. You might be onto something here. It said it. It's there. Come on, come on. In which case, this feels like we might be chasing. F 
Fu found it. So it is trying to set it. There should be something there. No, no. Okay. Found the button component, and it's a it is a Blazor Web Forms component button. That was erroring out. Yeah, uh, right, Jeremy Knight? This doesn't feel like it should be. Now it works! Friends, you can rewind, you can see. That should not be null was not working. Like, we had that erroring out. Okay. I'm going to get rid of this test line. Don't need this. Now the last one. Does the parent component actually get set? Have a good one, Gareth. Yeah, back to where we started, right? Mm. Let's see. No. Okay, so now... Um, it's line 34. That uh, tells me nothing. But it's this one that it's erring out on. And actually, I think... Can't we... Cannot find the parent component. That should give me a better error message here. Thank you, Gareth. Appreciate you tuning in. Let's see. Should get a better error message now. Cannot find the parent component. Okay. Okay. So, now what? Um, go up. Into here. Base web forms component. Parent, parent component is the name of this. Okay. Parent component cascading value it's passing with the value of this. Hmm. Thank you for the follow. Trezzy codes, welcome in. Hello. Trezzy's another member of the Live Coders team. Appreciate the follow. Thank you so much. Um, thinking this through. Um, let's do this. Um, from base web forms component. Now over here in our, in the sample, 
we should see that appear inside of every component now. If it is in fact rendering and using all of that. Come on. Finish that build. There it is. It's running. So if I go to this, I should see I'm not. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Our base web form component can't itself have a render to it. Hmm. Right, because I would have expected to have seen our little bold entry appearing on every page here and it doesn't so do we need to well we need to change how we're rendering how we're passing that information in Right, how do we get that parent object? How do we get that? Do we need to override the build render tree to insert ourselves? Right, do you see the, the issue, chat room? Um, this is being overridden and not used. Um, even if I yank this, just to make sure. Rerun that, just to make sure that that my my test of this, my integration test is is properly not showing things. In which case I might have to doink around a little bit with writing my own build control tree. No, it's not there at all. Yeah. It's not there. Bill Ashton Kinetic, thank you so much for the follow. Appreciate you joining us. Um, okay. Okay. We can do this. So, all right. Let's quit out of that. Let's get rid of uh no. Uh base web forms component razor. To base web forms component.cs. Yeah, this is going to do a thing here. Okay. So I should be able to turn this back into... And all the tests should run properly here. Because it never did anything. Or not. Still can't find the... That's the error that we're trying to fix. Um, so I'll make this again an abstract class. No. Um, but I think... What if we did, like... So there's a number of different gimmicks, a, bu a bunch of different tricks that we've pulled here with how 
our components render and do things. Um, what if we override the build render tree and insert that cascading parameter call in the build render tree and then tell it to go and build the rest of the render tree? Right? so that we effectively inject something at the top of it. Look at that, it's my top search. Uh, no, no, no. Mm. Nope. Docs, Microsoft com. <clears throat> Martelex asks a pretty good question here. Let's talk about this. I have a project created in Razor using Razor pages. How difficult would it be to migrate to Blazor if possible? You're actually pretty well set to migrate there. Um, if you've built... Um, code behind, not code behind, but they write page models to go with your Razor pages, you can convert them to component base classes, and it should copy over pretty well. You've already got a page directive up at the top that specifies where to listen. You might be able to take it directly to Blazor. I haven't tried that, but it is a very good question from Mertilex. Um... I'm tempted to give that a quick try and see what happens. You know what? I think we, I think we can um, try something here real quick, just to see, because well, Mertilex might have something here. Uh, is it hold down control and I can open a node? Yeah. Um, this isn't too bad an idea. Um, let me go here and let's do .NET new. Um, and uh, let's create, uh, well, let me see what the list of templates are. I want a regular Razor Pages web app. So let's do .NET new uh, web app. Uh, let's call this Razor. What do you mean? Oh, .NET, I forgot the new. There we go. Let's see if we can help Mertilex here real quick. Okay. Um, CD Razor. Um, so if we take a look at pages, right? So these are .cshtml. You would want to rename them to .razor files. Um, so if we take a look at index.cshtml, um, model doesn't exist. You're going to have to change model to um, at inherits and change the base class over there. Um, oh, and page doesn't have a URL listed that you're listening on, so you're gonna have to you would have to add that as well. Uh, let's see, privacy. Yeah, it just says at page. So you would need to specify a URL next to a, a page to listen on. You're gonna need to change at model to at inherits and change index model to uh, to inherit not from um, oh, come on to not inherit from page model but instead inherit from um, component base your on get on post on put on delete methods they all go away and you're going to need to handle events differently. It's actually not that easy. The more and more that I look at this, you're going to it, it, you're going to spend some time rewriting if you took advantage of some of these things. It's doable. Your your markup, your razor markup is going to convert very easily <clears throat> with just those couple changes up at the top. But the interactions, the actions that you're handling, those aren't there. You're going to need to set up event handlers for those appropriately. That a submit happened, inspect, do a thing. 
because the the verbs are not there. So um, that would be a good blog post, Myrtle X. I'm gonna have to come back to that. Thank you for the question. I really appreciate it. Um, that's not something I had thought about. Um, okay, the so what I want to do here is I want to. I want to look at the build render tree capabilities inside of Blazor. Really? No. No. Where is it? I want to look at build render tree for a base component, for a component base. You have a strong basis to give it a try. Well, you're welcome, Martha Lex. I'm, I'm glad I could take a little bit there and help you out. Um, all the best to you. You feels like there's a couple steps there that you're going to be able to work through. You'll get there. It's going to take a little bit more work than just a change a couple things and it continues working. Um, static assets, tag helpers, use components. Is uh, build... No. No, no. No, not render. No, no, no. No. Where's that method? I don't think it's here. I don't think it's here. Hmm. Erica asks if they can post a link. Sure, go ahead. Link posting is always open because the bot will come back and and read the title to us. Ah, there it is. Build render tree. Thank you, Erica. So yeah, this is yeah, this is one of the one of the answers on the on the search engine. I wanted to find the official documentation and it doesn't look like there is any. So protected override void build render tree render tree builder and open element close element. Now we 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 pulled a fast one with this. Where do you see this? We pulled a fast one with this. Uh go up go down into here with the data binder no data binder um, because we when it evals we returned a render fragment and we called the render tree builder here opened the component closed the component and we passed in here's what we want it to evaluate and it actually did a thing so what I'm looking at, what I'm thinking here is, can we do a combination of what Erica just linked us over here, doing the build render tree and inject into it, go for it to go do the other, um, for it to, in, to inject the parent reference and have it go render the rest of the child component that inherits this and close the element at the end. <gasps> it might work. It might work. So, let's start with that. Head back over here. See if we can add this in. Um, let me, let's put it here. Now, I do have OmniSharp running here. So if I start typing it, nope. Nope. Omni completion pattern not found. <clears throat> uh, nope. Ooh, okay, that worked. Um, builder dot. Ooh, those aren't words that I can use here. No. <clears throat> um, yeah. What's the deal with OmniSharp hotkeys? Uh, OmniSharp Vim. Right, this should 
start giving me some information. Da, 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 da. See, I want to get that. Uh, what am I missing? Omnisharp Roslyn requires mono. Da, 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 da. Am I missing this? I mean, it's clearly doing something. I don't know what these things do. By default, the server started automatically. Blah, blah, blah. Omnisharp. Uh, okay. To get completions, control X, control O. You'll, to use other features, you'll want key bindings. Right, so, yeah, that's not giving me anything here. Um, let's do this. Um, I only have one element that I'm adding, and I'm not opening an element. It's, see, I, I'm adding, right now I'm kind of toast. Friends, I'm kind of falling down here on this. I apologize. Um, and if I write this out, it's going to fail. I'm okay with that. Let me launch Visual Studio Code. Because I'm, I'm getting into, a, into the weeds here that uh, I need some help. And I don't want to waste time wandering trying to find this. Let me open that folder. Uh, yeah, go ahead and install the C-sharp extension. I'd like to click you. Really, I would. I'd like to be able to do anything in here. I don't know what you've done to me, Visual Studio Code. But... Thank you. Still not the right folder, right? This is the old project we were working on. And it's reinstalling OmniSharp. Or not. Uh, recent, here. All right, at least we're in at this point. Downloading package, fine. Um, but I was looking over here at this. There it is. Let's see, I don't have OmniSharp running here yet. It's still installing. Let's see if we can find it. Ooh. Come on. Installing the package. I thought we just installed it. Okay, finished. All right, so great. I know it's an uncommitted change. No, and I'm not getting IntelliSense. Or is it still building in the background and it just hasn't updated yet? See, I, I, uh, it's not telling me anything here. No. See, I'm kind of, ugh. Right, render tree builder. Let's see if we can, maybe we can get 
some documentation on that. No, no documentation on that. Unless it's no, it's not in here either. Um, okay. See, this is where leaning on Visual Studio helps us. And unfortunately, it means that folks that aren't using Visual Studio kind of fall on their face. And that makes me sad. Um, because, wow, that really doesn't... Yeah, boom. Nothing. That's that's OmniSharp not running. Hmm. That's quite annoying, isn't it? Found that. It knows it's a thing, but it doesn't have any of the properties on it. See, that's a big that's a big problem, isn't it? Yeah. Um, friends, I, I hate to say this, but I think I need to cheat. Uh, sure, go ahead. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm gonna. Hey, there we go. Um, let's see, what do we have? Yeah. I, I can't work with the tools on Linux and there's no documentation for the feature that I want to work on. Um, so I'm gonna roll over to Visual Studio because the features and the documentation, and we are working on something that is pretty new. Um, started working on the parent property of a component. I, I need to get this feature done. I'm, I'm, I'm going to press the button here and head over to windows. I mean, I can do this, but other folks can't. Uh, that's not it. There it is. Um, I'm going to pull in everything here. Feature button is what we want. Okay. Um, and let me start Visual Studio for this. Take a look at it. But these are things that I'm going to take feedback back to the team and say, hey, can't do this. Doesn't work. We've had more problems with with uh, OmniSharp in our Linux installs than we've had successes. That's a problem. We need to make that better. I mean, great, we get syntax highlighting. But auto-completion things aren't working. Come on. There we go. Um, so I'm going to go to uh, base web forms component. It's still loading up everything. Look at that. There it is. Um, <laughs> so in here right look at that it doesn't know what render tree builder is i didn't there was no way for me to get that syntax to start stelzy says omnisharp somehow dies half the time in windows for you yeah so we were missing a using statement we weren't getting help with the using statement 
Doesn't look like it added the using statement. Thank you. So now I should be able to say, there we go. Not, I don't want to add content. Maybe I do want to add content. Hmm. It's not text content. Right, but we added a cascading value here. Hey, Erica. Is there a CLI command for a Blazor Wasm? What do you mean a CLI command? You can create one from the CLI, yes. Um, hmm. Yep, there's a .NET new. Um, you need to install the templates for it. Um, so if you go to blazor.net, click through to the documentation. There's instructions here about installing the template or they moved it there it is so I clicked through to get started and here it is here's the instructions to install the latest template to do blazer for WebAssembly you're welcome coding stocks um, so let me jump back over here. Um, did we do? Are, Are you kidding? kidding? I don't want to hear that. For some reason. Uh, some of the hotkeys I use are the same as voice mod. Nice. Nice. Um, where else do I do a builder dot? Because I, I thought there was someplace else that we were adding. No, not string builder. Open, open component. That might be what we need to do here. Right. Cascading value um, of type base. Oh, wait a sec. Is there a cascading value without it? Maybe. Sequence zero. Can we do that? Nope. Um, all right, so uh, type base web forms component because we're going to pass ourselves in. And can we say base dot build render tree? Um, oh, oops. Can we say builder dot add attribute? All right, all right. Sequence, sure. Where's my find results? Really? really? There we go. Uh, name. Write it, and it was parent component. Yeah. Let's see if we can get this to work. Uh, add attribute to value this see if that'll work right so I should be able to go over to text test explorer now and run this yeah client side that'll work mm -hmm. coding stocks it absolutely works build succeeded Right, while that's building, I'll, I'll show you. So I clicked into, to I went to blazer.net, 
And from blazer.net, I click the documentation. Actually, get started probably gets you there faster, right? Yeah. Execute this to install the um, the templates. So come back over here, paste that in. Give it a second. And you'll see Blazor WebAssembly app. And now you can, right? .NET new um, Blazor Wasm. And now you're in and working over there. So there you go. All right, let's head back uh, to this. Um, really, you you went through and you built. You didn't actually run the tests. Hmm. Hmm. Oh my gosh. Time has gotten away from me. Um, I'm going to need to stop here in just a minute. Make sure, let's see what happens when this runs. Because maybe we got it. I, I, I know build succeeded. It did the thing. Run the tests. Come on, man. What are you doing? Hello. Okay. One failed, and it was the one where we're trying to get the parent. Okay. It was null. It cannot find the parent component. All right. So... Jean Valjean is here. Hello, my friend. That is coder 24801. Uh, yeah, Blazor Wasm is client side. They they've changed the terms here several times on it, and it it is confusing to folks. Um, it, it's also not released yet, so they have that freedom to change the terms. Um, so they're getting there. Um, all right, so the parent object wasn't set on that. Hmm. Interesting. What if we even went dumber than this? And I'm going to do something really dumb here. What if... Right? Um, I don't care about this one. Equals uh, my button. Right? Yeah, I know. It, you think it can't be, but oh, it can. Uh, go away, Task Runner Explorer. We're not talking about you today. It removed the failed test. Do you see that? Malformed component under test. Must have a start and end tag. Oh, I deleted that one. Try that again. <clears throat> Nothing is dumb if it works. You could argue not elegant, but not dumb. Eh. Okay. It didn't behave properly, but... 
This didn't behave properly, but... Oh! Uh, no. Look. Now it's out here in the did not run. Why didn't you run that? That's the one I wanted to run. Hmm. Okay. So I'm still not getting it passed in. Hmm. Okay. So it added the attributes. Um. Let's do this. That should be a thing. That should appear in all of our components now. Let's see if we find it. Even if we don't find it, I'm going to stop after this and wrap up. Hmm. Okay. And if I run the sample, do we get that? Or does it reset and blow out everything? Let's see. This should look ugly because we have that built with Blazor Web Forms component entry added to everything. Nope. So we can't intercept that. Oh, you're kidding. Yeah, it's not there anywhere. Yeah, if they override build render tree and they don't call base, mine doesn't get called. And I don't think they're calling base. Okay. Ah. Well, that was a failed experiment, wasn't it? Um. So the way, all right, so what's the way around this? wrap every single one of our components with uh, with a cascading value that does this automatically and make that the standard. Yeah. That feels like the thing we're going to have to do. The way that we're getting the, the master layout, right? Aren't we getting layout... Uh, Oh no, that was that's a different branch that we are investigating. Not a waste of time, no, but we've learned we've learned something that we can't do. We can't force any kind of inherited layout into everything. What that means is for the work that we were doing on our base page in order to pass a component around that has these references back and forth we can't do it cascading value as we were talking earlier 
we're going to have to either push it out to a service or push this cascading value into every component. I think it'd be easier to do this as a service that we pass around. If I use my own base class, you can wrap like you want. Well, I do. This is a component base right here. I'm already doing this. My components inherit from this. But my components have not overridden build render tree. Nope, they don't inherit from that. Nope. Um... Inherits from my class. So this should be using my overridden one that I had over here. That's why I nested a button si inside of a button and it still doesn't work. Line 12. Where? This inherits from component base. Yeah. It has a hidden renderer. Hmm. Okay. Blazer Mr. Magoo has a link on GitHub. Hmm. Okay. So let me let me undo, put that back in what we had there so that we can see that it does build but it doesn't but it doesn't uh test properly so we have a a pickup point for next time no nope, that's not it it's, that's not over there is it no where's my mario music ah there it is ah yeah um, so let me commit this. Attempting to automatically uh, wrap uh, components with a cascading value uh, component. All right, I'll push out those changes. It's gonna fail the test, but it's gonna help us identify how we can move forward. So we spent a lot of time trying to figure out how to get that to work so that we could pass, right? All we're trying to do is we're trying to pass a parent element reference into a child reference. And we're trying to do that automatically and it, and we're not quite getting that to work. I have a feeling we're gonna need to we're gonna need to wrap all of our components with this with this cascading value in order to force that to work. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. Let me see who else is uh, broadcasting out there on Twitch so we can set up a raid. You like my PowerShell theme? Thank you. Um, you can find it out there at uh, fritz.livestream on GitHub. Um, it's in one of my repositories on my GitHub. Um, you know what? Uh... Let's raid. Who's who's? <laughs> oh my gosh! You know who's raiding? That would be fun to raid. Uh, Frank Krueger is streaming. Let's raid Frank. That would be a lot of fun. Um, let me put out the raid call. Well, thank you, Erica. Here's the raid call. If you're a subscriber, copy the first 
block of text here. Put it onto your clipboard. Get ready to head over. We're going to say hi to Frank Krueger. Frank, Frank's a developer who builds and, and does a lot of stuff with .NET. Um, if you're not a subscriber, copy this second line as we get ready to go raid Frank. Frank's a, a friend in the in the Seattle area. And uh, let's be loud. Let's be proud. <clears throat> Let him know that uh, we're welcoming him and uh, saying hello from this stream. Like all my other videos, this video will be over on YouTube. I published two more videos to YouTube this morning. I've got a bunch more to send over there, and I'll be working on that a little bit later in the day. So you'll see more of my videos from January popping up there. We're going to get caught up here in very short order. Thanks so much, everybody, for tuning in. I will, uh, I'll be back tomorrow. Hopefully we can get this cleared up. We can get our parent elements references done. And we can move forward. See ya.